Earth has existed for billions of years and has certainly experienced a lot in its past. Countless cultures, religions and peoples have inhabited it and left their mark on it. Our home planet has tacitly handed down some of its past to us, more or less. Of course, coincidences have often led to the discovery of mysteries. Mankind has been able to discover much of it so far and has been discussing and researching its meaning and purpose for centuries. Stonehenge in England, for example, or the ruined city of Machu Picchu in Peru. Humans have by no means discovered and explored everything that is mysterious, nor have they found answers to the many questions about the uniqueness that have already been discovered. Mysterious artifacts, amazing finds, and archaeological puzzles are still being uncovered. The following 10 are among the most incredible discoveries in our history. Are you fascinated by mysterious things and archaeological discoveries? Then give us a thumbs up, subscribe to Hidden Worlds, and join us on our journey. Ball Game from Eurasia Whether basketball, handball, football or tennis, ball games are among the most popular leisure activities today and attract an immensely large audience at the professional level. For a long time, it was assumed that the first object resembling a ball was found in Europe. Corresponding finds in Greece were estimated to be 2,500 years old, but the Asians seem to have been one step ahead in this respect long before. Finds excavated in a tomb in China are around 3,000 years old. What the leather balls were ultimately used for has not yet been conclusively clarified. However, as other artifacts found in the same tomb have pointed out, they must have come from horsemen. In view of their age, it's assumed that the military once used balls for sporting activities, precisely in order to stay physically and mentally fit and thus to face the enemies in battle with all their might. Gold Graves in Sipan Tomb robbers stole some loot in 1987, but the thieves drew attention to a previously undiscovered tomb in the Peruvian village of Sipan. In order to retrieve what could be saved, the government ordered an emergency excavation and discovered the completely preserved tomb of a prince of Sipan from the Moche period, which existed from the 1st to the 8th century. And this was so studded with objects made of gold that to date, this discovery is the largest gold find in a burial since the discovery of the funnel resting place of the Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun. But not only that, eight other graves could be found under the pyramid made of mud bricks in Peru. Not only a former ruler, but also the graves of a priest and a military commander, among others, were found. Enigmatic Statues of Mourning Women Almost life-size, their robes coordinated, all of them wearing their hair tied in a braid, the facial expressions appear sad, and their hands seem to be stretched out towards heaven for prayer. The identical poses allow researchers to agree on at least one point. They must be mourning terracotta women, of which only 48 known examples exist. And they were not made in Greece. Figures made of the same material were usually much smaller in Greece. What has been found out about the statues is that they are very likely funerary sculptures for which the southern Italian town of Canossa is known. They were made in the early 3rd century as well as in the late 4th century before Christ. The Rock Tombs in Şanlıurfa, Turkey What is a necropolis? An Acropolis is a larger burial site with a structural design from ancient and early times, and the rock tombs found in Şanlıurfa are probably the largest necropolis in the world. Numerous tombs have been integrated into the rock face of the mountain, on which Urfa Castle is also located. The archaeologists who became familiar with the restoration of the tombs have already been able to identify 80 rock tombs and attribute them to members of the former royal family. On the highest part of the mountain hill, a tomb was discovered that is larger than the other tombs. Here, one suspects are the remains of the nobles of Edessa, as Shan Lufa used to be called, King Agba and his family. The Jordanian Lead Codes His great-grandfather found the collection of about 70 ring-bound books made of lead and copper sheets more than 100 years ago and kept them in silence, the Israeli Bedouin Hassan Saida explained in 2006. At that time, it was a sensation because the writings were supposed to have been made during the 1st century AD. After a radiocarbon etching of the leather binding and after no modern admixtures could be detected in the lead alloys, one was initially very sure of the authenticity of this find. 
so much so that the Jordanian government even sought their return. After the find was presented to the public in 2011 and further examinations were carried out by international researchers, disillusionment set in. The lead codices are in fact an amateurish forgery, the writings contained in which were even copied indiscriminately from various originals. Mosque on a Hill In 2014, the followers of the Islamic State once again demonstrated their brutal lack of conscience by not even stopping at a religious building in their destructive fury. They blew up the shrine on Nabi Yunus Hill, near the northern Iraqi city of Mosul. Cruel, without question, but the terrorists certainly had no idea that it would not only be this act of terror that would go around the world. For in this attack, they uncovered an almost 3,000-year-old Assyrian palace, including untouched artifacts and marble sculptures. Long forgotten and only reinvestigated through subsequent research, this palace was once an ancient monastery from early Christian times, which was converted into a Muslim sanctuary for the prophet Jonah more than 600 years ago. Despite all the still acute dangers, archaeologists and scientists are now devoting themselves to bringing the newly discovered out of hiding. The Last Gale Rock Massive in Somalia From the outside, Last Gale is a small, inconspicuous rock massive near the town of Hargeza in northern Somalia. But on closer inspection, the fascination for the cave that exists within it is understandable. The walls house ancient cave paintings that were discovered by French researchers at the end of 2002. Their discovery went down in the history books as likely the best preserved rock painting in Africa. The passionately created drawings are certainly old. According to experts, they were created around 4,000 years before Christ. On display are multicolored paintings of people in widely cut clothing, of cows, a dog, and a giraffe. The meaning? Unclear but it's impressive to get a sense of how people before our time viewed the same thing. Mysterious Clay Tablet Inscriptions A total of 12 tablets were found in 1964 near the Temple of Tel Deir Allah in northern Jordan. All of them were inscribed, which archaeologists and scientists have not been able to decipher to this day. Whether they are characters, symbols, or numbers cannot be guessed, because no other writing found in the past leads to the inscriptions on the clay tablets. So it will likely remain unclear forever what the presumed inscriptions on the surface of the tablets mean. However, it's fairly certain that the clay tablets must date from around 1200 BC. Unfortunately, this is of little help in gaining knowledge about their contents. Labyrinthine Enclosures in Stevens for several years, archaeologists in Denmark have been investigating a series of palisade finds from the Stone Age, which, taken as a whole, must apparently make up a single structure. The reason for this assumption is the discovery of an oval fence construction, framing an area of about 18,000 square kilometers. The purpose of this structure, however, has so far remained hidden to the scientists, said Purnell Road Sloth, the head of the excavations. In any case, fences were erected in five rows, extending outwards for the construction. But not only that, the openings of each fence were staggered, reminiscent of a labyrinth. Sloth suspects that such an arrangement could not have been a coincidence. Normally, palisade constructions were built for protection, but in this case, due to the fence arrangements and the associated protection from outside view, she thinks it was likely used as a collection point. Petroglyph Diversity in Algesasia at first glance, Algesasia in the northeast of Qatar appears to be an inconspicuous quarry. Rock, sand and vast land characterize its location. But if you look a little closer, you will discover a hodgepodge of mysterious petroglyphs. In other words, petroglyphs carved into stone. Although this curious landscape was not studied scientifically for the first time until 1964, the Danish-born archaeologist Peter Glob first reported finding 900 of these works of art in 1956. Some seem to have been placed randomly, others were even arranged in rows and patterns. The motifs are varied. Petroglyphs in the form of round holes were predominant, but carvings of fish, scorpions, ostriches and various four-legged creatures were also made. There are people who search for treasure professionally to increase our knowledge of the past. There are people who hunt for treasure as a hobby, searching fields and forests with metal detectors. And there are people who never expected to find treasure. 
In the following, you will learn the stories of these people and their incredible finds, which they made after years of intensive work or by chance. The Golden Viking Cross In Denmark, treasure hunting is a pastime and a popular sport. Many Danes use metal detectors to examine the ground for finds from the time of the Vikings, who spread fear and terror in the area of the North Sea and Baltic Sea 1,000 years ago. The feared Northmen sailed along the coasts and plundered and murdered. Near the Danish village of Alnslev, Dennis Hall was pursuing his hobby when his metal detector went off. Close under the surface of the earth, he found a 4cm gold cross weighing about 14 grams, which was worked in detail and showed a figure of Jesus. After analysis, the date of origin of the cross pendant which had belonged to a Viking woman was dated to between 900 and 950. This makes the gold pendant the earliest evidence of Christian symbols in Viking culture. Until now, a runic inscription on a stone from the year 965 was considered evidence of the early Christianization of the warlike Vikings. The treasure at a depth of 5,000 meters in 1942, a British steamer, the SS City of Cairo, was on its way from Bombay in India to Great Britain. On board the ship was 100 tons of Indian rupees. The silver coins, which belonged to the British government, were to be used, among other things, to finance the war against Nazi Germany. A German U-boat was lying in wait off the African coast for booty in the Atlantic War. The British steamer was an easy target and sank after being hit by a torpedo. With the help of newly developed sonar equipment and using state-of-the-art robotics, a British team managed to locate the wreck. In 2013, the British government commissioned a French salvage company to retrieve the coins from a depth of 5,100 meters. By comparison, the wreck of the Titanic was at only 4,100 meters. The company used an unmanned diving robot to advance into the depths. Finally, the 100 tons of silver coins with a current value of almost 39 million euros were brought to light. The Celtic Treasure from the Bronze Age Before the Roman Empire, Celtic tribes ruled large parts of Europe for centuries. One of the cultural and economic centers of Celtic culture was located on the upper reaches of the Danube near Sigmaringen. The so-called Heuneberg was the fortress of a Celtic prince and a trading center. In 2010, archaeologists found the unopened grave of a Celtic woman who must have belonged to the prince's family in the immediate vicinity of the princely seat. The excavation work that was initiated came across the grave of a two- to four-year-old girl. The girl's grave was recovered in a sensational operation as an 80-ton block with the help of two special cranes. Only two meters away from the grave, the researchers came across another grave of a Celtic noblewoman. This grave was also transported to a laboratory by means of a so-called block salvage. The Princess of Betelbule died in 583 BC. The treasure of the princess included grave goods made of gold, amber and bronze, and proves the trade routes of the Celts, which stretched over thousands of kilometers. Pablo Escobar's Treasure In Colombia and South America, drug cartels have been fighting a war for dominance in the global cocaine trade for decades. The state, the Colombian police, and U.S. drug investigators try to break the power of the drug barons with varying degrees of success. The most famous drug lord was Pablo Escobar, who had almost 80% of the global cocaine trade under his control in the 1980s. Escobar was then considered the number seven richest person in the world, with an estimated fortune of 30 billion US dollars. In 1993, he was killed in a firefight with police. Now, in a former Escobar villa, his nephew found 14 million US dollars in banknotes in a plastic bag, a gold fountain pen, a typewriter, and undeveloped film in a secret hiding place behind a wall. Some of the banknotes were rotten and no longer usable. Escobar's nephew had lived on the property for five years and explained that a vision had led him to the hideout. He said that every time he looked at the car park in front of the house, a man would come into the house and then suddenly disappear behind the wall. A silver penny from the 12th century Some birthday presents pay off. When John Denham in Wales received a metal detector as a present from his sons, the landscape gardener and his sons walked the fields around his hometown of Wallingford, hoping to find something interesting. In a freshly ploughed field, at a depth of only 10 centimetres, he found a penny. 
The small silver coin turned out to be a 900-year-old coin from the time of King Henry IV. In total, only eight coins of this kind have been found so far. Denham's find is the best-preserved penny coin of this period. At an auction at the end of October 2020, the coin fetched a price of 6,700 euros. The Denhams shared the money equally with the owner of the field. The Treasure on the Gold Coast Part of the coast of the U.S. state of Florida is called the Gold Coast. These are beautifully sandy beaches that are popular with tourists and surfers. In the 18th century, ships of the Spanish fleet sailed off the coast, bringing gold and precious stones from the colonies in South America to Spain. In 1715, 12 ships were en route to Europe, fully loaded with treasure, when they sank in a hurricane. Jona Martinez is a 43-year-old passionate treasure hunter who spends his free time searching the Gold Coast for items from the past. I do it out of passion and not to make money, says the US American. Equipped with a metal detector, he examined the Turtle Trowel Beach on the Gold Coast and made a find. Under the sand, he found 22 Spanish silver coins from the 18th century. Martinez will not sell his find, but will keep it in his collection of historical items. $1 million in cash Sometimes it doesn't take an elaborate search to find a treasure. This was the experience of the Chance family from Virginia on a trip by car. On a country road, $1 million in cash fell practically right at their feet. The car in front of them suddenly swerved to avoid an object on the road and drove on. The Schwantz family stopped and discovered a bag lying in the middle of the roadway. In the ditch, they saw another sack. Instead of leaving it lying, they took the two sacks into the back of their Jeep and drove home. When they opened the bags, they were met by small plastic bags filled with banknotes. On the bags was written, SAFE. In total, there were $1 million worth of banknotes in the two bags. The Schwanz family took the money to the church and then to the police. To date, it has not been possible to determine who owns the money. Gold Treasure in Kazakhstan More than 2,500 years ago, the Sakha people lived in Kazakhstan on the border to China. They belonged to the equestrian peoples of Central Asia. The people lived as nomads and roamed the steppes of Asia. Little is known about their culture, but finds of gold jewelry have been made time and again, documenting the technical skills of the people. The Saka elite bury their dead in barrows with valuable grave goods made of gold and precious stones. Most of the burial sites were looted by Russian troops in the course of the 18th century. In 2018, an intact barrow was found near Kazakhstan's largest city, Almaty. Archaeologists suspect that the couple buried in the tomb was a Saka royal couple. The grave goods consist of several thousand pieces of jewellery made of gold and of magnificent weapons. The finds are estimated to be 2,800 years old and demonstrate the outstanding goldsmithing skills of the Saka people. A Royal Four-Poster Bed The antique dealer Ian Colson bought a four-poster bed in an online auction for around 2,500 euros. He was expecting a piece of furniture from the 19th century, as described in the auction booklet. At the time, it was fashionable in Britain to model furniture in the earliest centuries. When he picked it up, the expert noticed several details. For example, there were traces of carefully made repairs that were not to be expected on a piece of furniture that was 150 years old. The repairs had been carried out with medieval tools. Over the past nine years, Colson has tried to clarify the origin of the piece of furniture with the help of furniture experts and historians. Now, he is convinced he has proof that the bed is the wedding bed of King Henry VI and Elizabeth of York in 1486. The couple's marriage ended the so-called Wars of the Roses, a period of civil war. No furnishings from the royal household survived later wars. This is what researchers thought, at least until now. Treasury an unusual find was made in a nondescript little house in the parish of Offington in the UK after the death of an elderly lady. The lady's house was in chaos, with furniture falling apart and wallpaper coming off the walls. The household was cluttered with boxes and bits and pieces. The lady's grandchildren hired an auctioneer to search the household for usable items. There were rumors in the family that the old lady owned valuable things. These were supposed to be hidden somewhere in the house. The rumors turned out to be true. In a freezer in the cellar, next to a leg of lamb, a bag of jewelry was found. 
The jewellery, some of which dates back to the 16th and 17th centuries, has a total value of about 110,000 euros. A catalogue from the Christie Auction House from 1965 suggests the old lady bought the jewellery at an auction at that time. She obviously never wore the jewellery. Archaeology is an exciting business. Archaeologists never know what they will find during their excavations. For all their expertise, they can never be sure what the excavations will reveal. Sauna from the Bronze Age In Orkney, archaeologists have found the well-preserved and almost complete remains of a rare building that likely dates back to the Bronze Age. The researchers believe that it's a kind of sauna. It must have been built in the period around 4000 to 1000 BC. It was likely a place for ritual ceremonies. It's also conceivable that it was a place for giving birth to children or burying corpses. The building was well hidden and had restricted access. These are also signs that it was a very special building intended for a select group of people. A large water tank was likely used to produce boiling water and steam. Although researchers are not sure if the water tank was actually used for this purpose, the elaborate architecture and sophisticated structure indicate that the tank could not have been used only for cooking. Researchers are still trying to find out whether it was a sauna in the modern sense or whether festivals and rituals were also held in this building. Ancient Board Game in a 2300-year-old tomb in China, archaeologists have found parts of a board game. It's called Bo, and no one knows the rules of this ancient game, which was last played about 1500 years ago. The researchers found dice made from an animal tooth with 14 faces, 21 rectangular game pieces with numbers painted on them, and a broken token from a board game. Other finds brought to light a cave full of game pieces, as well as an old tablet. Reconstructions show that the token was decorated with two eyes. The eyes were surrounded by a cloud and thunder patterns. On the die were the numbers 1 to 6. These appeared twice each on 12 faces in the form of an ancient Chinese script, known as seal script. Two faces had no numbers. Although the rules of the game are virtually unknown, a 2200-year-old poem has given researchers some clues. The poem says, paraphrasing, then with bamboo cubes and pieces of ivory, the game of Lubo is begun. Sides are taken. They advance together. They threaten each other. Trapped in Amber Lena Struer, professor of botany, has discovered two flowers that were enclosed in amber for at least 15 million years. Both flowers belonged to the genus Strychnos, but not to any of the 200 species of this genus known so far. Struer therefore gave the flowers the name Strychnos electri and coined the species name because of the amber in which they were found. Normally, researchers only ever find fragments of plant fossils in amber, such as a petal or a stamen. The finding of an intact plant is rather rare. The researcher Poina had discovered the amber in 1986 in a mine in the Dominican Republic. He thought that the flowers in the amber looked as if they had just fallen from a tree. To examine the amber more closely, he sent it to Lena Struer, an expert on the genus Strychnos. After long research, she was finally able to confirm that it was a previously unknown species of the genus Strychnos. This was an important discovery for understanding the evolution of plants in the Caribbean and the tropics in the New World. Vindolanda Plates Archaeologists have discovered the Vindolanda tablets in the former Roman military camp Fort Vindolanda from 1973. This camp was once used to secure and monitor the hinterland of Hadrian's Wall in Britain. The Vindolanda tablets are made of wood and, at the time of their discovery, were Britain's oldest handwritten documents ever found. They were mostly a standardized size of about 20 by 9 centimeters, were mostly made of older wood, and were inscribed in ink. The tablets recorded in Latin things like military matters, but also personal notes between soldiers and their families or soldiers and slaves. For example, tablets were found on which grain deliveries were confirmed or shoe purchases were settled. On other tablets, fighting techniques were noted. By 2010, 752 of these tablets had been translated. Vindolanda tablets were also found in the period after that. Tomb of the Silver Pharaoh 
This find is the royal tomb of Pharaoh Susenis I. The French archaeologist Pierre Monte discovered it rather accidentally in northern Egypt in 1939. The find was a real surprise, because archaeologists would not have suspected such a royal burial chamber with jewels and treasures in this area of Egypt. The most important discovery in the royal tomb was the sarcophagus, which had been crafted from silver with amazing detail and outstanding craftsmanship. No silver sarcophagus had ever been discovered before, and the find is accordingly astonishing and amazing. Geoglyphs in Kazakhstan The geoglyphs in northern Kazakhstan are 50 geoglyphs of different shapes and sizes. One massive geoglyph in the shape of a swastika stands out. This cross was a well-known shape long before National Socialism. These geoglyphs were discovered with the help of Google Earth. Besides the swastika, there are rings, crosses or squares, for example. Some are longer than an aircraft carrier. From the ground, the geoglyphs are difficult to see, but from the air, they are very easy to see. In addition, archaeologists found remains of buildings and fireplaces at the geoglyphs. This could indicate the rituals were held there. Silver coin from the 12th century the very rare coin depicting King Stephen was found in 2018 by Graham Rushton, a metal detectorist on the border of Lincolnshire and South Yorkshire. At first, he didn't know what rare find he had in his hands. It was only experts at a museum who were able to tell him what rarity he was holding. They estimated that there are only 25 known examples of this coin. King Stephen was the grandson of William I. As King Edward, he became King of England in 1135, succeeding his uncle, King Henry. The latter, however, had appointed his only daughter Matilda as heir. Stephen's accession to the throne thus plunged England into a 19-year civil war. The coin found shows Stephen with his wife. It was found just below the surface of a ploughed field. This was also the spot where Stephen was defeated by the Earl of Gloucester in 1141. The latter was a half-brother of Henry's daughter Matilda. He was subsequently imprisoned, but was later released. To end the civil war, he agreed in 1153 to appoint Matilda's son Henry as his heir. 2000-year-old banana farm Researchers have found artifacts in Wagadagan on Mabayug Island that indicate bananas were grown here. The island is located in the Torres Strait between the northernmost tip of Australia and Papua New Guinea. These finds indicate the indigenous people were already cultivating bananas here more than 2,000 years ago, and they were not hunter-gatherers, as was long assumed. They found traces of fruits, charcoal, and stone tools. The examination of thousands of microfossils revealed granules of banana starch. Since bananas were not native to the Torres Strait, the researchers assumed that the fruits arrived there through trade with inhabitants of Papua New Guinea. In Papua New Guinea, the cultivation of bananas had been known for thousands of years at that time. Ancient Chinese Liquor A team of researchers in China has found a bronze cauldron containing a liquor from the Qin dynasty. The liquor must be around 2200 years old. The bronze cauldron was found with 260 other objects in tombs in the Chinese province of Shanxi. It seems to have served as a sacrificial vessel. The cauldron was sealed with plants and natural fibers. When the researchers opened it, they found about 300 milliliters of alcohol inside. The scientists had not expected this. The liquid was milky white and slightly muddy. It was subjected to chemical tests. The results showed that it was a highly concentrated amino acid substance. It also contained a small amount of proteins and fatty acids. Therefore, the liquid looked similar to a yellowish rice wine. 2,000-year-old bronze pot Excavations in central China revealed a 2,000-year-old bronze pot. When it was found in a tomb in Henan, it contained more than 3 liters of unknown liquid. The pot had a curved neck. It resembled a swan in shape. The researchers also found a bronze helmet, a bronze basin, and swords made of jade and iron. The yellowish-brown liquid showed impurities, so it was sent to Beijing for tests. The tomb itself seems to date from the turning point between the Qin and Han dynasties. It may have been the burial place of a low-ranking official. Experts identified the swan shape as a mute swan and assumed that the craftsman who made the bronze pot must have studied these swans very well to make the pot look so realistic. 69,347 Roman and Celtic Coins 
The largest hoard of coins ever found in the British Isles includes 69,347 Roman and Celtic coins. The coins were buried three feet under a hedge and a pile of clay with a wipe of three quarters of a ton and was discovered in Jersey Channel Isles. Reg Mead and Richard Miles searched for the 10 million pound treasure for 30 years. In 2012, they finally succeeded. Under the Treasure Act of 1996, the find was declared treasure. Thus, it officially belonged to the Queen, but the finders were entitled to a reward. The least valuable coins were worth £100 each, thus the entire treasure had a value of several million pounds. Added to this was the jewellery contained in the treasure.